So recently we have been doing some R&D on trying to come up with a configuration with our own uh, power tray for mounting the power block here so that you can run a bunch of accessories in one location, rock lights, light bars, um, raptor lights, whatever it may be. You can tie everything into one location and then run this into the interior and you can have all of your switches in one place instead of having a bunch of wiring shoved into your engine bay and it being a rat's nest. Uh, this will definitely clean it up. So we're just trying to make our own bracket system that is easy to install and uh, mounts everything that you need. So we did just get this um, made and bent up. Uh, I have yet to test it out, so I'm gonna see how it fits. Um, I do know we have to make some adjustments already to the whole layout, um, but everything comes pre-threaded to make installation really easy. We had a couple of the competitor ones and um, everything was very difficult to install. You had to, you know, from the underside, uh, put a nut. Um, and that was really difficult if this was already installed. And just installing this itself was very difficult because this bend was the opposite way. So you had to get from underneath here to get the bolt started. And then um, this longer side here, we made it all one piece. Um, we had a competitor one where this was a separate piece. So you had to bolt this to the top plate and then you had to bolt this to the uh, fender well. And um, it's just, there's not a whole lot of room and to get in there with a ratchet or a wrench and uh, get everything together was very difficult. So we made it one piece, which is gonna make it a lot easier. And then we bent this in the up direction. So now when you go to install this, the, the uh, bolts are very accessible from the top and you're not trying to tighten everything from the bottom of the tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the Forerunner, see how it fits, and uh, we'll go from there. So this is a 2022 model. Um, in order to mount this power tray over here, you do need to take the bracket off for this fuse box here in the back of the engine compartment. We are gonna be modifying the bracket so that you can still mount it, but it's gonna be farther back and out of your way. Um, factory location is kind of like right here and that's exactly where the bracket's gonna be going. So we're gonna do a modification to the bracket so that we can push this back and um, we can put the bracket right here. So I'm gonna make sure everything lines up with this. And if we have to make some modifications, we'll do that and get a new one made. Now we did make everything slotted so you should hopefully have no issues with uh, things lining up. And if you need to move it back and forth, you can do that. So we got two bolts here on this top section. And then we're gonna have one bolt down the bottom that holds it to the fender well. Now obviously this is way easier to install because I can access the bolts right here. Imagine trying to reach down behind or underneath the panel to try to tighten these bolts. It was not fun. And then from the fender well, we're gonna be going into this hole right here. And it looks like the slot on our bracket is lined up pretty good. So I should be able to put a bolt and a nut through there and the bracket will be installed. So I went ahead and got the um, carriage bolt down there through the um, bracket and into the fender well. Um, carriage bolt's gonna make it a little bit easier to install as well, because you won't have to have something on both sides to tighten it down. Um, so now I'll just be able to go in from the fender and um, tighten it down with just a socket. So I'm gonna hold the bolt in put the washer on and the nut. And go ahead and tighten that down. So now that everything's lined up, I'll go ahead and tighten these up and then our bracket is fully installed. 
Now I can go ahead and test all of the holes and stuff on the top. Like I said, I already know we need to adjust these um, slots here. They need to move down maybe a quarter inch or so. And then we have one hole over here that needs to be moved also about a quarter of an inch. And then everything should be good. So this right here is essentially going to be your fuse box for any of the aftermarket accessories. Um, you have eight different spots here from five amp up to 30 amp and uh, all your fuses to go along with that. And you're gonna have two connections here for your positive and your negative wires. And then the connection here that's gonna be running uh, into the interior for the switch panel. And then from inside, you can operate up to eight different functions. So that's gonna be bolting onto our panel like so. And then uh, you're gonna have the uh, circuit breaker that's gonna be bolting right here. So right here is the circuit breaker that's gonna be bolting right there. And then you're gonna have a power wire running from your battery to this, and then from the other pole into your fuse box. And then you're gonna have the negative wire um, in here, either running to your chassis or to your battery. So what we're really trying to do is just make this the cleanest and easiest installation that we can. That's why we are proving all of this out, trying to make our own um, bracket system based off of what we see from our competitors. Um, and like I said, it's much nicer to have something like this set up in your engine bay versus having uh, a bunch of different wires all tangled up here going to your battery to operate um, just a few different lights. All right, so when it comes to wiring the kit, it's fairly simple. You're going to have um, one long power wire, one long ground wire, and we have a short power wire here. So we're going to be using the long power wire that's going to be running from the battery to the circuit breaker here. And then we're going to be using the shorter one to go from the other pole of the circuit breaker into the fuse box and onto the positive terminal. And then the uh, ground wire here is going to be going to the negative side inside the uh, fuse box. We're going to be routing that back out through and then to either our chassis or our battery. I don't know if these wires are long enough. We might have to make some modifications uh, when we actually order our kit to make everything fit properly with where we have everything located here. So we'll start with the easier one, which is gonna be our ground wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the terminal for our ground wire. We'll go ahead and get that screwed on. Now I want to feed this through the slot here and out the bottom. Feed that all the way through. All right. Now I can route this nicely behind the fuse box and probably just tie it in right there with the factory ground uh, connection. All right. So that's all connected. Now I can go ahead and work on the positive wire. I guess I'll connect the one that runs from the fuse panel to the circuit breaker first. So we'll put that down there. Get this screwed back in. Okay. Fish that out from underneath. And we'll hook that up here to the circuit box, or the circuit breaker, should I say. It looks like there's just enough wire to do that. Tighten that down. Now all I have left to do is hook up this power wire on the backside and then run this up to our battery.
So this wire might need to be a little bit longer. We might need to adjust the length on the wire that comes in the kit. This one might be a little too short to properly make it all the way to the battery if you want to route it nicely anyway. Get that bolt or that nut started on there. So realistically it would mount back there, do a 180, come up here alongside the breaker box or it could go uh, underneath the panel as well and then it would go here next to your fuse box and then over to your positive terminal and you can see it's just too short and that's me routing it the quickest way possible if I wanted to go underneath the um, bracket here or if I wanted to go underneath the fuse box um, I definitely would need more wire so we have to make an adjustment on that. I guess for testing purposes though I will just route it uh, kind of straight across here directly to our positive terminal so that I can just make sure everything is working properly and uh, show you guys how it works. Now we can just plug in the harness for the uh, switch panel and go ahead and feed that up through the slot and into our fuse box here. This is a little bit more difficult because these uh, slots here aren't perfectly lined up. That's one of the things we need to make a change on. So I don't even know if the plug for this is actually going to fit in this situation which it will not. So um, in order for me to test this out fully, I'm going to have to wait until we get the um, revised version of this. But for now, I can just plug this in and not put the cover on. Um, this does have a cover for it as well. But essentially, this would plug in here. It would run through the slot just like your power and ground wire. And then you would run this through your firewall, and then you can hook up the switch panel on your dash. Here is the switch panel I was talking about. Um, right now the buttons are all blank. It comes with a sheet of um, different things that you can put on here, a whole bunch of different options to choose from. So once you have this routed through your firewall, this simply goes together. You can actually see it just blinked, so we know it's working. Um, you can see it's on. You can change the colors on this and it's also Bluetooth, which is pretty cool. So if you're out on the trail, camping or whatever, um, you can pull an app up on your phone and control all of your lights from your phone, which is pretty nice. So let's get a light hooked up to this and test it out. All right, so I just grabbed um, a rock light off the shelf from Baja Designs. We're going to use this to do a test because this is a really simple install. You just have power and ground. Um, and then we can test out our switch panel, make sure it turns on properly. So let's go ahead and hook this up. All right, I'm not really quite sure what kind of amperage these things need to operate, but I'm going to go with 10 amps. Um, these aren't very big, so I'm going to go ahead and just put in our power and ground into a 10 amp slot here. And then we should be able to figure out um, which button on our switch panel will operate this. And we'll know everything's working properly. So I'm gonna go grab a small Phillips head so I can tighten those down. All right. So it's the third slot in. So it's either gonna be this one. No, there it is. So you can see here, now with this inside, you can control your rock lights. So if I were doing this, I would just wire all of my rock lights to this one amp or one 10 amp fuse or whatever you think it would require. And then you can turn all of your rock lights on with one switch here. 
Um, so yeah, that's the uh, benefit of having a system like this. Should make for a pretty clean setup and then any extra wiring that you have, you can just put underneath the tray here and you really won't see it. Also, I just figured out how to change the colors on your switch panel. You just press and hold the on off button. And there we just got a new color. Press and hold it again. I'm not really quite sure how many different colors they have, but just press and hold the on off button. And that's how you switch colors. All right. So I actually installed the app for it, which was fairly easy to set up. And uh, you can customize the background, everything like that. You can customize all of the buttons that you want on here. And um, literally within one minute of installing the app, it's set up and working. So you can control all of your lights from wherever. Um, and I don't have the key on. So if you're at the campsite and you want to turn on a certain light, you can just hit the button here on the app and uh, turn it on. You can turn on multiple things at once and you can turn all of them off at once. The only thing I'm not sure yet is um, the lights here on the control panel. When I turn it off on here, these still stay on. So I don't know if this has like a timer on it maybe. So after a certain amount of time, these lights just kick off because otherwise this might stay on overnight. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes R&D type video. We're gonna go ahead and uh, make the changes that we need to, to both the um, tray and the wiring harness and um, see if this is actually the setup that we want to go with. And if it is, hopefully it'll be available soon on yodaexpedition.com. And uh, you can pick one of these up to clean the wiring up on your Toyota. This is the first time we're posting a video um, of this style. So if you guys liked it, uh, let me know down in the comments and I can continue to do some other videos like this where we're doing R&D on some uh, specific products to offer uh, of our own. So yeah. If you guys are new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. It'll definitely help us out because like 90% of all the people that watch our videos are not subscribed and uh, every single one helps us grow. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.